videos for this are actually online. Um, every single video that we've done so far, and I'll show you where these videos are. Because I'm going to have you guys do your own character and your own project here after we finish this lecture today. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Richland Game Videos, you'll see the Richland Gaming Department uh, site. And if you click on Playlists and click on Fall 2016, which is what we are in, what can you do uh, with iPage? You will see Mutant I'm Rigging Class Part One, and share what I love. Mutant Rigging Class Part Two. We run our own business. Part Three, Part Four. I'm building my we'll portfolio. A, uh, part Five. iPage comes up. with everything you need to get online. This is basically a step-by-step -step process of. All right. So how we've taken this mutant we'll and there's some. And um, gone through and scale modified him and rigged him to get him to where we're at now. With that being said, let's go ahead and finish him up. Um, go to go up to panels, and what we want to do is shift to our camera one, and camera one brings up our facial face cam, and we want to pull up our facial controls. So go to Window Animation Editors Blend Shape. Window Animation Editor's Blend Shape. And uh, as you can see here, we've got some blinks in there. We've got two blinks. And I don't know if this is playing at real time. Okay, so right now, if you click on your animation options, which are on the right at the bottom to the right of the key, you want to make sure that that says playback speed other and it's 30 frames per second okay these are in your animation options under preferences you can also get there by going windows uh, settings and preferences preferences and clicking on animation or um huh that's weird That's really weird. Oh, time slider is what it's under now. But anyways, all right. So like I said, we've got some blinks in there now. And now it'll play at real time. Um, and what we want to do is go ahead and add some mouth movement. And this is using morph targets for the character. So in order for us to key these morph targets and to see what's on the time slider, you'll see that these morph target sliders are red that means that they've been keyed but we can't see any of them on the timeline so we have to actually select our morph target so if you hit the select button it's gonna pull up where we've set the keys for the eyes okay so what we need to do is now set some keys for the mouth um, yeah do what Oh, just hit select. Okay. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do some mouth animation for this guy. And uh, I'm not going to get too complex here, but I'm basically just going to do some like zombie like chattering or something like that. So if you play with these sliders, I'm going to move, just move, go ahead and move to. Um, I don't know, say frame five. And uh, you can play with the mouth sliders. We, again, we don't want to mess with that joy at all. And uh, what I'm going to do is set open mouth to 0.5. Actually, I'm not going to do that. Undo that. Set that to zero. Uh, so at frame five, go ahead and go ahead and click key all, and then move to frame seven, and then set that open mouth to 0.5. 
and then hit key all again. Then move to frame 9 and set open mouth to 0 and close mouth to 0.5 and then key that. Key all. Yeah, so, so at frame 5, we, I just clicked key all. At frame 7, I set open mouth to 0.5 and keyed it. Then at frame 9, I set close mouth to 0.5 and keyed it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy frame 7 and paste it on frame 11. So right click on frame 7 and go to copy. Move to frame 11 and hit paste. Right click on the timeline to do this. And then copy frame. Copy frame 9 and put it on frame 13. And uh, what we're going to do is select frame 5 through uh, 13 by basically selecting 5 basically move your time slider to 5 hold shift and left click and drag and you'll create a red selection that selects these keys right click copy then move to frame 50 right click paste Move to frame 95, I'm sorry, 100, right click paste. So paste that on frame 50. And frame 100. Then copy frame 0 and paste that on the last frame of your animation, which is frame 111. And actually, that is not going to work for some reason. So move to frame 0, and then middle mouse click on frame 111 and hit S. Or actually, sorry, key, key all on your blend shapes. So again, I'll do that because we want frame 1 to be the exact same as frame 111. So move to frame 0 then middle mouse click frame 111 and hit key all. So all we've done here is just added some some mouth movement here. And it doesn't have to be perfect and I mean again you would want to go back and like do some stuff here and make it like kind of cool but all we're trying to do is just show you guys the morph target pipeline to get this animated okay so you can go ahead and close your blend shapes now and save this scene file save scene and now we are going to push this guy to unreal so go ahead and open up the epic games launcher and we're gonna create a new um, Huh? We oh, we already made one? Yeah, just go to the um, mutant target, mutant target. Oh, okay. Uh, so go into your mutant project folder that you should have. Did we already import this dude? I mean, it doesn't matter, you guys. You can just create a 
a new third person project. Four point twelve, four point ten, it doesn't matter. Launch a new project. It doesn't matter. It's all the same, man. Third person. So again, we're going to go to a new project, third person, and uh, you're going to want to save this project in your D drive wherever you're storing these files, and then create the project. And uh, once you get a new project open, the first thing we're going to do is import this guy. So in content, make a new folder and call it mutant. And then go into that folder, import. Oh, we need to export him, don't we? Whoops. So jump back into Maya. Um, we need to export this guy. So this is going to be the animation file. So in Maya, go ahead and go to File, um, Export All, and change it from Maya Binary to FBX at the bottom. And we're going to set some of these settings over on the right-hand side. You want to make sure that Bake Animation is on. And start frame is 0 and the end frame is 111. And uh, other than that, it really doesn't matter. We're going to export the character file too, and we want embed media to be on at that point, but right now we just worried about animation, bake animation. <laughs> and make sure you set it at the bottom to FBX export, where it says files of type. <laughs> So all you got to make sure that's on is animation and bake animation. And then go ahead and save this file. The name of the file is going to be um, mutant idle. And then export it.
right, so then save this scene, and now we're going to open up the mutant animation ready file. And then we're not going to do anything in this scene, but export it. So just go to File, Export All. Same thing, but this time we're going to turn animation off. And under Geometry, you want to make sure Smoothing Groups is on. And Embed Media is on at the bottom. So animation's off. Under Geometry, Smooth Groups is on. And at the bottom, under Embed Media, Embed Media is checked on. Okay, so those three things. And this we're going to call Mutant to Unreal. Mutant to Unreal. Yeah, FBX again. And in your FBX settings, make sure animation is off. Smoothing Groups is on, and Embed Media is on. And we are in the Mutant Animation Ready file. Make sure Animation is turned off. Okay. Make sure Smoothing Groups under Geometry is on, and under Embed Media, Embed media is checked on. And then go ahead and export it, and it's going to be called Mutant to Unreal. Smooth mesh? Yeah, smooth mesh is on. Oh, it's on. Mm -hmm. But when we export that, it looks like there's a problem. It's saying uh, error unsupported operation on mesh vertices. It wants us to run a, wants us to delete the non-deformer history before exporting. So I believe we can just go up to edit, <laughs> delete all by type non-deformer history. and then just export it again over Mutant to Unreal and we'll see if that fixes it. Um, so that didn't fix it. And the reason why it didn't fix it, I believe, is because this file is referenced. And what we need to do is import the reference in order for us to be able to affect it. So if you go to your reference editor, file reference editor, and right click on where it says mutant rig at the top, or at the, in the middle, and go to reference or file import objects from reference. So that's going to pull these into the scene so we can actually affect them. Because when they're referenced, they're usually referenced outside of the scene. Okay, so in your reference editor, right click on mutant rig and go to file import objects from reference. Don't worry about the hand. Now go to edit. Uh, delete all by type non-deformer history and that should do it and then try and export it again export all over mutant to unreal make sure your settings are right export Okay. 
so this is now throwing different errors. I think we're going to actually have to go into the rig file itself. So open up mutant rig. Don't save this. And um, in your reference editor, turn off right hand. So go, in, go into your reference editor, file reference editor, turn off right hand. And select the guy. And with him selected, go to edit, delete by type, non-deformer history. So we're going to do it just on the guy. Before we were doing it on everything in the scene and it was messing it up. So now we should be able to export it over that mutant to Unreal. And this should work, hopefully. Yes, it worked. All right. So again, I'm in my mutant rig file now. And I clicked on him. Well, the first thing I did was uncheck the hand in the reference editor. And then I clicked on him and went to edit, delete by type, non-deformer history. Not delete all by type, but just delete by type. And that just deleted the non-deformer history on him. Him only. And then I exported him, same settings. Export all, same settings. And now let's pull them into Unreal. So in our mutant folder in Unreal, go ahead and click Import. And go ahead and find that mutant to Unreal file wherever you exported it. It's going to be called Mutant to Unreal FBX. And go ahead and import that. And there's some settings in here we're going to turn on. We want to change the skeleton to the UE4 mannequin skeleton. And there's a little drop down underneath that that says show advanced and there is a checkbox called use TOA's ref pose go ahead and turn that on and then click import all you let me teach the class. Um, some errors are going to come up. Just go ahead and click yes to all. It's going to complain. And when it finally imports, go ahead and double click on Mutant 2 Unreal. And we should see our bro. Does anybody need any help getting here? Just, just take your time. We'll wait for you. <coughs> oh yeah, is he as short as me? Oh, you know what we didn't do? We 
didn't actually do any eye like looking around animation, but that's okay. If anybody needs any help, definitely now's the time. Chris can show you. So Ira, if you go to show, you can turn off, where it says bone, you can turn it to none or select only. And that way it won't show all those bones. Does anybody need any help getting here? We're kind of waiting on everybody to. Okay, go to f uh, import and import that file, the mutant. Mutant rig, or um, sorry, mutant two on real file. Okay. And change the skeleton to the UE4 mannequin. And there's a drop down underneath that. Change and check on use TOA ref pose. Okay. That's it. That's it, man. <laughs> Alright, so uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and click on the animation tab on the upper right. And uh, there should be something that says third person idle. Right click on that and go to reimport animation and select the mutant idle FBX that we um, exported. Oh, he looks cool. Uh -huh. Why aren't his fucking morph targets working? Oh, I know why they're not working. There's a checkbox. What's that? Did you check the embed media box? Oh, um, did you repath your files when you added them, uh, when you opened up your files after you got yeah, on the computer? Did you repath them on all of the files you used? Yeah. Okay. If, if you see the textures in Maya, yeah. then you should have no problems. Um, there was a checkbox we missed upon import. Uh, 